thank you very much for joining us. Okay, thank you for this introduction, Bridget. Um, so welcome to my webinar um, that um, we go in which we're going to focus on listening tasks in PTE young learners. Just a few things before we start. Most of them have been mentioned. Uh, the session uh, will be recorded. I have just turned on a recording. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I won't be addressing quest any questions during the webinar, but uh, please uh, put them into this Q&A um, tab or check chat box that you can see at the bottom in your meeting controls. Um, it doesn't get lost if you uh, type the question. I will get back to questions um, after the webinar and there will be a um, short session answering your questions at the end. As Bridget has mentioned, um, if you have registered for, um, uh, for the series of webinars, uh, you uh, um, uh, uh, recording the recordings from the webinars will be made available to you after uh, at the end of the webinar series after October the 9th um, so don't worry everything is being recorded right you can get back to uh, to that uh, later on um, today this is the day um, devoted to listening tasks so we're going to focus on um, first two tasks in the uh, PTE Young Learners exam. Um, but first, just a quick look at the exam structure. We'll have a quick look at the exam structure, although um, uh, Bridget covered that thoroughly yesterday. Um, but um, I want to uh, once again look at um, how um, listening tasks work within the whole exam structure. Uh, so just a, a quick look at that. Then we'll be looking at uh, two uh, tasks, task one and task two, a uh, short presentation of each task, plus um, we'll discuss some strategies, some tips, some techniques to apply while getting ready for the tasks. And at the end, um, uh, we'll have a look at some resources uh, where you can find the material to work on, um, where you can find some material to get your students, your pupils ready for the exam. So let's move on uh, to discuss um, uh, or to have a look at the exam structure. As you remember, those of you who were present yesterday, as you remember, uh, PT Young Learners is an exam that tests all four skills. So you will find in this examination, we will have um, eight tasks and these tasks will test all four skills so listening reading writing and speaking today we are focusing on listening so obviously um, as i have mentioned we will be focusing on task one and task two uh, pte young learners mm. So, as you can see, uh, task one and uh, task two, um, task one is the same kind of tasks, uh, tasks across all levels, all four levels in the exam. Um, task two will be a little bit different for lower levels, it's matching. We will have a look at that in a moment and a little bit different um, for higher levels where uh, there is answering question. Mm, no matter what the level is, the um, score points for listening tasks always sum up to the maximum of 30 points. So listening tasks take, uh, as I said, no matter which level it is, listening tasks always take a maximum of 30 score points out of 100. If you were present yesterday, uh, Bridget showed um, the certificate and the performance report that the pupils receive after this exam. And this performance re report is a breakdown of skills, right? And each skill has um, the maximum level of points for listening. This is 30, the maximum of 30 score points. So your pupils um, will receive the breakdown of skills in which it will say listening, let's say 25 out of 30, right? And that's the, um, some information for you, for the pupil, for the parents, how well they did in particular skills. So listening, 
30 um, score points out of 100 uh, maximum. Right, uh, so that's it as far as the structure and uh, the background um, uh, to the listening tasks. Uh, so we are focusing on uh, first two tasks in the exam. Task one. Uh, task one, it's exactly the same um, across all the levels. So this is a three option picture based multiple choice. Uh, no matter what the level is, it will always look exactly the same. Um, the idea behind this task is to assess the ability to identify the details of uh, some very sp simple spoken discourses. So uh, what we are focusing here on are the details. We are identifying the details. The details will vary depending on the level. So for the lowest level first was the details tested, the ability to listen, to identify the details. Uh, so the details tested will be times, locations, actions of people, prices, quantities, etc. On top of that, for springboard, um, there will be also regular activities. And then again, on top of that all, uh, for quick march, um, what, uh, what is tested, level three, it's reasons, past, present, future activities, and for breakthrough, um, additionally, hypothetical outcomes. So these details uh, that uh, test takers have to identify, the, um, they all, they reflect the language content for particular levels. All, every level has a specific language content, some specific, let's say, expectations of what they should be able to do. And these expectations, this language content characteristic for every a level is reflected, for example, in the kind of details they have to identify uh, at every level. Scoring sim system is very simple for receptive skills. Uh, the, that's typical for any exams, and this is the same for PT young learners. So as I uh, mentioned, all scores, all score points from this task uh, go to listening. So uh, for the uh, purposes of skill breakdown, all scores take, go to listening. We have eight or seven items. Level three is a little bit exceptional. There are only seven items. Um, level one, two, and four, we have eight items. Each item uh, is weighted as two, so it's worth two points. And there is only correct, incorrect options. So the answer is either correct or incorrect. There is no partial credit here, obviously. Uh, so that means that the score points for task one will be 16 the maximum of score points will be 16 or 14 if this is level three. Some strategies, some tips as far as um, task one is concerned. Some, uh, some tips, some strategies will be characteristic or specific for task one. Some of them will be um, more general. Let's start with the basics, right? So first things first. The, the first and foremost um, strategy is to read and listen to the instructions. And that's the teacher's task, um, to, uh, to teach them to read and listen, to turn attention to uh, the instructions. Well, uh, obviously, uh, we dealing here with young learners, for many of them, uh, that might be first or one of the first uh, formal tests, formal exams in their lives. Actually, this is one of the reasons, uh, Bridget uh, yesterday talked about reasons why parents decide to um, um, have them, uh, have their children take this exam. Um, and one of the reasons is uh, also that they want uh, their children to get uh, used to get accustomed to um, uh, exams, to tests, to formal tests, which they will have, a lot of them, they will have a lot of uh, tests later on during their education. So here we have um, typically, especially lower levels, we have pupils um, that might not have much experience with tests, 
So um, reading and listening instructions is an important highlight here. And also reading and listening to uh, the instructions will guide them and show them what they have to do. It, that's also important for this stress factor. Um, uh, young learners are not that resilient to stress, so they easily get carried away uh, by the situa exam situation and they can easily get distracted from uh, the main um, task that they have to perform. This, uh, these instructions are recorded um, and uh, they are um, recorded um, in a very nice uh, manner. Uh, let me play that to you right now. Um, okay. Um, all right, I can't play it, it doesn't matter. So um, what we have in the instructions, obviously, is the information um, on who there is going to be. So uh, what we're going to expect. So this is going to be a conversation, for example, in this context. And this is a conversation between Sophie and Mrs. Brown. So we can expect uh, two different voices, one child's voice, one female voice. Um, so. Uh, uh, well, that, that makes um, our test takers ready for, um, for the conversation, that the task is to put a cross in the box, right? So we do not highlight the pictures, we do not cross the pictures, there is this box that they have to cross. Seems, uh, as I said, more, might seem um, very obvious, but these are the things that um, uh, they don't uh, do, right? That th this is one of the first tests, as I said, so these might be um, elements they, they might forget. And in the instructions, you have this information that they listen to this information twice. So um, they don't have to rush. There is this first listening, some general listening for some keywords, um, for some general idea, and then the second listening for getting the details uh, that I mentioned, identifying the details in the listening. There is always uh, an example, and uh, um, uh, this example um, is also an important part here. So as teachers, highlight the purpose of the example. Um, so they can listen to the example. Let's play it this time. First, listen to the example. Example. Where is Mrs. Brown? Mom, are you in the kitchen or in the dining room? The dining room, Sophie. What do you want? It's lunch time. Can we have something to eat? So this is the way it goes. And why is the example important? First of all, they get used to the voices, right? So the voices in the example, will be the, the voices mm, uh, they will hear later on during the listening task. So they can get used to them. They uh, can, um, well, um, listen and differentiate them, um, especially when we have generally, well, a girl and, uh, and a woman, right? So there's not such a um, big difference uh, here between the, the tone of the voices. So, uh, so they get used, they uh, differentiate the voices. They listen to the delivery, how this is delivered, right? So they, especially lower levels, it will, the example will put them at ease that this is delivered in a very uh, slow pace with long pauses, uh, very clear speech um, produced slowly, right? So that is also the moment they can um, write, re relax a little bit, right? That this is going to be not that difficult. So this is not like authentic if this is first words, springboard, so lower levels especially, but this is really, mm, let's say, student or pupil friendly delivery. And they <clears throat> also can get into the rhythm of this listening. Mm, 
because uh, th this listening, this conversation has five second pauses between particular tasks. So they get used to this rhythm and they uh, know how much time they have to analyze pictures, to look at questions and uh, to get prepared for the following tasks. So this uh, role of the example is very important and uh, it's another technique that is to be taught, like highlight that Please listen, do not neglect that, do not skip the example. The example can help you um, complete the tasks. And now after that, um, there will be um, uh, the whole set of techniques for predicting, right? Which is general, generally like, like the, the key skill for listening. When, you, uh, when we listen uh, to something or when students listen to something, all the listening tasks, the, well, the huge part of the success is in how well students predict that. And this is what happens in real life. Huge um, uh, part of the success in uh, understanding listening is how much we can predict that. So uh, help them in that, help them in developing these uh, techniques, the uh, techniques of predicting. Let's start with the uh, questions. So focus them on questions, focus your pupils on questions, focus them on the keywords and questions. So that might be even, well, if you're running some exam preparation tasks, that might be even highlighting the keywords so that they immediately know what it is, that this is, the, the keyword here is want. Um, and later on, when we look at the uh, when we look at the um, example, uh, the tasks, uh, we can see that the crucial question will be here uh, that Sophie asks, how about, uh, that suggests what Sophie really wants, because there, a lot of elements will appear, but only one will refer to the keyword from the question, which says, want, Sophie uh, wants something. And that's the technique uh, that is um, like basic um, in uh, approaching, especially listening tasks in, in, in exams, but also in PT young learners. Another, um, another technique, uh, another, um, uh, right, uh, let's make clear the drawings. And then um, after that, there is a whole set of questions. So that is, uh, that would be important to, um, to teach your pupils to ask themselves before they, um, they move on to, um, to do the tasks in the exam, uh, ask, teach them to ask themselves some questions about uh, the uh, tasks here. They work with pictures, so there will be mm, there will be a set of questions that they should ask about every picture. You remember there is this five second pause before every um, task. There is a pause between uh, the first listening and the second listening. So there is a lot of time uh, that they can use to analyze pictures, to ask themselves some basic questions about the pictures. So sometimes that will be what, uh, the question will be simply, what do you see in the pictures, right? Uh, because actually there will be, uh, in this picture we can see uh, fish and rice, then we can see fish and chips, we can see chicken and chips, and all these options appear in this listening part, but obviously um, only, uh, there's only one that we are interested in, and by analyzing which uh, set we have in each picture um, that gets them ready for uh, giving the correct answer in this uh, task. So what do you see in the pictures? That's the first uh, question. What is happening? So that's the time for asking, especially some present continuous um, questions. Uh, so what, what each person in the picture is doing. So that's another um, question to be asked here. So she's playing, she's drawing, they are playing basketball, things like that. So um, you can spend some time uh, with your pupils producing sentences like that. Who, right? Who is in the pictures? For some pictures that would be crucial. Uh, are there adults, uh, children? How many adults? How many children? Uh, boys, girls, men, women? Mm, so um, that will be another question to ask um, uh, before, uh, ask themselves. They should ask themselves before they approach the task then what uh, the people in the picture are doing, right? Again, present continuous sentences to be produced, uh, questions to be asked. Um, 
uh, before um, uh, approaching the task. L higher levels will focus here, it's springboard, higher levels will focus, some questions will focus on uh, what they look like. So analyzing faces, hair, um, um, what they're wearing, um, I know the generally the, the, uh, the way they look. Uh, so how do they look? It's another question. The higher we get, there will be more details in the mm, um, pictures. So uh, there will be some details that will identify the places, for example, so that in B you can see paintings, so that's gallery, whiteboard in C, so that's, um, uh, that's classroom A, uh, some elements of bank, for example. Um, and also <clears throat> in higher levels, this is again quick march, there will be a lot of additional information in the picture. So what other information does my picture show? So for example, I can see that this is um, a librarian office. So there's a sign saying librarian. I can see that this is um, uh, m some maths class, some uh, mathematical equation uh, in the blackboard. So um, that's a set of questions that they have to to ask themselves before um, they approach the task. And that's the set of questions you teach them to ask themselves. So that's the, the prediction is crucial for a crucial strategy for, uh, for this type of listening. Right, um, let me move on. Um, also, for, especially for lower levels, that's important that you work with vocabulary lists. Every level is provided with um, a vocabulary list. You can download the vocabulary list from, from the website. Uh, you can download guides for every level uh, which contain vocabulary lists. Mm, and these vocabulary lists are very useful tool uh, for preparing, especially listening. And, especially for lower levels, because um, item writers, those people who prepare um, tasks for the exam, uh, while designing items, while designing recordings for listening tasks, they use vocabulary lists um, uh, for particular level. And if you, if you take the first question from the first example I showed you, for example, what's for lunch, it's exactly when you look into the vocabulary list for first words, these are exactly uh, words taken. What for lunch and man, these are all words from the vocabulary list for the first words, right? So these items, uh, exam items are carefully designed to reflect a uh, vocabulary list expected at this level. So incorporate vocabulary lists in your teaching practice, like make, uh, make sure right, that um, students, your pupils are exposed to the pronunciation of the vocabulary items from the list. That will help a lot, that, that will help them um, do well in the examination later on because uh, they are exposed to the items uh, that th later on are present in the examination. Obviously, uh, young learners, this is a very specific kind of a learner, you all know that um, one of the crucial uh, differences between adults and young learners is the attention span, right? Um, and the way they, uh, they approach the very process of learning. Um, you all know that it's, it's an important uh, element of teaching young, le young learners to keep their attention, to make uh, activities active, to give them motivation. So just um, an, an idea to gamify actually working with past papers or working with exam type tasks, um, I want to show you. Uh, that will help you to, to make it all, like make it work with all those strategies I, that I have mentioned, this, this activity will help you to, uh, to make it a little bit more attractive, more motivating to, um, for your young learners. So the idea for activity is called listen and move. What you do, uh, well obviously you know that um, it's hard for young learners, this is hard to keep them in one place, so any kind of movement is always attractive. Um, for them. So uh, this activity, you, what you do, you put your uh, young learners, your group in a row, right? You arrange them in a row, obviously, if 
it's possible. If not, then um, there are some other options to, to deal with this activity I will mention. But the best idea, if only, if only you can, is to, uh, to arrange them in a row, so arrange them spatially. And you display in front of them two options, two pictures. If you have a projector in class, you can use the projector, obviously. If not, you can just copy two pictures, two options from listening. Uh, you can hold one uh, and the other in your two hands, uh, on, in two sizes, if to say. And you present, um, well, the, this example here is taken from Team Together, something that uh, Bridget mentioned yesterday, a new uh, Pearson course that is uh, very well suited for, uh, for PTE Young Learners exam. So this is an example I have taken from a course book. So you can take uh, activities like that from course books or from past papers, whichever, right? The idea is that um, we are identifying detail. We're practicing this skill of identifying a detail. You put a question just as it is in the examination, where is Anna? They look at that, they are standing in a row, and then you play the item. As I said, either past paper or uh, you make it past paper, or you can take it from any um, uh, course book you work with that provides uh, questions of this type where they have to match and choose uh, one of uh, two or three pictures based on a detail identified in listing. And you play the recording, I'm going to play it. Where's Anna? She isn't in her bedroom. No, she's in the living room. She's tidying up. Oh, yes. Right, and th that's the short listing, just as it is in uh, PT Young Learners. And after that, you ask um, your pupils to step to the side, depending on which side they choose. Do they choose side A, they step to the left, or do they choose picture C and side C, they step to the right. So there is some movement in the class and uh, they, they get focused on the activity. They have motivation because that might be a competition. You can run, I don't know, 10 runs like that, 10 recordings, and you can calculate points and you can point a um, uh, 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 winner here. Uh, so um, they are motivated. Uh, it's a little bit different. There is movement. So uh, you've got everything that actually you need with uh, young learners. And well, at the same time, you can practice prediction that I mentioned. So you display their pictures and you ask all those, quest all those questions. You analyze the keyword in the question itself. So where would be the keyword? Uh, you analyze different details there. So um, you can practice it all in uh, a little bit, uh, let's say, an un unusual different way uh, involving movement. If you can't move, um, well, another way would be using some Kahoot or quizzes or whatever application or maybe application or website in the, um, uh, in the mobiles, if your pupils are allowed to bring mobiles in class. So um, uh, th there are a lot of uh, different applications in which you can run quizzes. So Quizlet, Kahoot, quizzes, whatever. Uh, you can run it this way if you cannot move or you can simply, if they are not allowed to bring in mobiles, you can ask them to raise uh, their hands left or right. Mm, but obviously the best way would be to engage the whole um, body into the activity. Task two. Uh, levels, you remember levels one and two are a little bit different um, for task two. So levels one and two are matching, different from levels three and four when we answer questions in, um, in task two. And um, right, okay, right, let's change the slide. Okay, so basically this is matching name to a picture, right? So you have a list of names um, in the middle, as you can see, uh, right and to the right and to the left, you have pictures that will be uh, matching names. Uh, so we always have names in the middle. Uh, the pictures could be people, could be objects, that depends on an actual uh, task. Um, and right. Okay, 
Right. Uh, and what it assesses, basically, it's very similar to task one because this is uh, assessing um, the ability to identifying details and the details will be people's appearance, everyday activities, simple objects. So these are the, the details tested at level one and two that they have to identify. And scoring is, again, very simple. So all scoring goes to listening in the breakdown of skills. So all score points go to listening. We have, we have seven items so seven names to be identified each item uh, is scored two each correct item or zero so what we get is 14 maximum of 14 points for task two level one and two strategies will be very similar to uh, task one that I have mentioned um, because that well technique here of taking this task is very similar it's identifying details it's matching pictures so first of all we start with the instructions the importance of instructions because well they are a little bit different obviously than for task one uh, the instructions set the situation this conversation here is always within some situation within some background for example here it's a toy shop and uh, so we get ready for students or pupils get ready for a conversation in toy shop. So some kind of uh, area or range of vocabulary that they can predict they will hear. The conversation is in parts, right? So it's also in the instructions. So uh, they should be ready for listening to it in parts. So after every part, there is a break, there is a pause where they can uh, look at the pictures and they can match. They draw a line. That's very important that they turn attention to that, that in this task, they draw a line. That's very natural, uh, like um, this one here. Uh, uh, drawing lines uh, is something they're used to, but uh, they can't do anything like I'm putting a cross, highlighting the um, pictures. No, they have to draw lines and they have to, well, focus on that. Here we have two extra pictures. So as you can see, we have eight names all together, together with the example and uh, 10 pictures. So two pictures are extra. So put them at ease, that will put them at ease uh, if they can't find a match for two pictures. They know that two pictures are extra. And again, the conversation, they listen to the conversation twice. So this are, these are the details that uh, they, sh they should focus on while listening to the instruction. There is this example that I mentioned. Example gives them the chance to get used to their voices. There will be always two voices because that's always a conversation. Uh, get used to the delivery and uh, to get used to this rhythm of this uh, task in which there are pauses after each part of the conversation. So this example is also very important. They shouldn't skip it. They should um, be taught to, uh, to listen and to focus on the example. And questions about the pictures are in place again here, so they will help to predict. So what do you see? Who do you see? How do they look? And what is important, especially in task two, this question, what else you can see? Because all those additional elements in the pictures will be important during listening. So this airplane here, this uh, doll here, for example, you can see tortoise, balloons, a, a hat, a teddy. So all these elements should be analyzed by them very quickly, what they can see. It's good to uh, run through the vocabulary if you are um, uh, working together with them. But th these are the questions that should be taught to ask themselves before every um, every um, exam task and these questions will help them to keep focused, uh, will prevent them from getting distracted. If they have this set of questions, okay, now I have to ask these questions to myself, they will, uh, they will stay focused on the task. Levels three and four, they will be a little bit different, as you remember. So uh, levels three and four is answering questions, right? So here it's actually listening and writing uh, involved, although for the purposes of skills breakdown, as I said, um, all the skills, uh, all the points go to uh, listening in the breakdown of skills. Mm, so uh, this is simple questions about a dialogue, about a conversation, and this is listening and writing, as I said. 
uh, this assesses the ability to understand some spoken text, some conversation, and write short answers relating to the details of the text. Scoring is again very simple. As I said, all scores, all score points go to listening uh, for the purposes of skill breakdown. Um, there are eight items at level three and seven items at level four. Two points for every correct response. There, are, there is no partial credit, only two or zero. So that means that the maximum is 16 score points in, at level three or 14 score points at level four. Strategies and tips, uh, things to teach um, your pupils. Well, again, instructions, focusing on the instructions, listening to them because the instructions are being read the, um, during this examination. So uh, they should be taught to focus and listen to what is a uh, listen and read. So this is conversation, what the, this is what they can uh, get from the instructions. That's a conversation, that's a conversation in parts, divided in parts. So there will be a pause after every part. That their task is to write a short answer. Short answer, that's a crucial word here. I'm going to talk about it in a moment. And that this is obviously listened to two times. So there are two listenings, um, which is also important, especially at higher levels. I'm going to uh, talk about it. And example will help them to get used to their voices again, delivery, uh, the rhythm of the task, which uh, provides pauses between particular parts of the conversation. Again, the crucial thing is predicting. Predicting here will be a little bit different. There is obviously no picture analysis, but uh, first of all, what kind of information um, is actually required? Is that a time? Is that a place? Is that a name? And maybe I can predict some vocabulary uh, that will appear. Uh, so you practice this predicting by especially analyzing questions, right? So you have question when, that means the answer will be some time, some, I know, month, day, uh, maybe a specific time. How far would be the answer would be uh, distance. So you can try and predict uh, what words will appear, especially how far is easy because the number of possible answers is quite limited. So we will have kilometers, mile, meters, uh, probably not much more. So uh, practice predicting based on the pictures. What kind of detail will appear? What kind of detail we are um, interested in and quick predicting vocabulary items that might be uh, here. The question also gives us the information, what kind of information uh, as far as time uh, or tense is uh, connected. So is that about the past, uh, the past, uh, the present or uh, the future, right? Uh, at levels three and four, we will have all three, I would say, kinds of tenses. So we'll have past present and future tenses. And the question shows us by analyzing the question, by helping them with the question structure, uh, where they can identify um, uh, the time or the tense in the question uh, that will help them to predict what kind of information they will expect in the listening. Teach them to make their answers concise. That's a short answer, right? So if this is a question, when, question two, for example, when did Oscar um, start his new school? So do not write Oscar started his new school in September. No, because there's always some chance that they will make a mistake, they will uh, make a spelling mistake, which will disqualify this answer. Uh, if this is September, just put September, make it as concise as possible. And they have to be aware of that. Um, make this as concise as possible. Um, also, okay, uh, um, use digits anytime you can, right? So if it says um, September the 4th, do not write fourth in word, um, as a word, right? Put it as a digit. Anytime the answer is um, a number, use digit, do not write words. That makes um, well, uh, this way you avoid making any spelling mistakes in the word. 
use the question, use the, um, uh, what the question contains. Here you can see in the example, a very good example of that, right? That uh, actually the answer to the question is a part of the question. So uh, look at the question, use the words from it, um, and if it's possible, obviously, and look at the spelling especially. So to avoid any spelling mistakes, uh, sometimes the question can help you. Uh, use it, don't worry. You can, sometimes it's, it's absolutely not that sometimes the answer is just a part of the question, repeats the same words as in the question. They shouldn't be afraid of that. So teach them this as well. And uh, <clears throat> never, never ever leave empty gaps, right? No, always put something, always, at least I know some keywords that you heard, always put something. There is always some chance that it will be correct and you can get additional points. Never leave empty gaps. And remember, you hear the conversation twice. So the first listening is for getting the idea, getting some keywords. They can jot down, they can put down some keywords while listening um, somewhere next to, the next to the question. No problem. Then if they cross out the words, uh, they, these are not taken into consideration. So why not uh, taking some notes, some general notes, some keywords uh, while listening for the first time. Also the time to get the signposts, right? right? Get Getting the direction of the th conversation, uh, which way it goes, and general um, uh, general twists, let's say, in, in the conversation. That's the first listening. The second listening then is for getting the details and putting the final answer. So they don't have to put the final answer in the first listening. There's always the second one, which uh, uh, where they can put the details on paper. And again, another idea for an activity uh, which will gamify exam preparation, uh, some activity in which you, that, that gives you also the chance to practice all those strategies while uh, getting them ready for the listening um, tasks, especially uh, part two, uh, levels three and four, but could be also used with any other levels. That's a bingo competition. Bingo is, as you probably know, it's a great idea for an activity for listening, uh, but reading as well, generally receptive skills where they, uh, where this prediction um, is, a is an important factor because predicting is crucial for uh, receptive skills, as we've mentioned. So that's a quick bingo competition. It requires a little bit of preparation, but makes uh, past paper practice uh, a little bit more fun um, and makes it gamified. And there will be also a little bit of movement, probably um, a little bit of deviation from some standard procedures. So basically what you have to prepare for this uh, competition is a list of 20 words. You take uh, task two, you, a, you take a past paper, you take the tape script and you prepare a list of 20 words. 10 words you take from the tape script, 10 words you just make up, right? You invent 10 words. So you have 20 words, 10 words from the tape script, 10 words made up by you. And you prepare a grid of six fields. So this is, uh, this is what you have to prepare actually, right? In advance, a little bit of preparation is necessary. You can also display the words um, on the whiteboard, if you have a projector and they can prepare grids by themselves because that's just take a piece of paper and draw the three lines all together. Um, but you can also prepare it yourself. And now you tell your pupils that they're going to listen to a conversation. You take it from task two conversation and you give them the topic and maybe some more details about the conversation. So who is talking about what they're talking, some topic of the conversation. And the idea is that they take the 20 words and they choose six words that they expect to hear during this conversation, right? So uh, they analyze, uh, and this is the predicting skill, right? They go through uh, vocabulary areas that might appear, right? What kind of vocabulary, what do you expect? So they put six words from the list into the grid. Um, let's say, and you play the recording past paper recording. Uh, you can play it as it is. You remember there are pauses in the recording, so that might be um, a little bit tiresome to, to listen with pauses, so you can cut out if you want, right? If you, uh, if you know uh, how to do it, you can cut out the pauses or you can play it as it is. 
no problem. With pauses, they will have time to, uh, to analyze that. And while they are listening to the recording, they cross out the words as they can hear them, right? So once they have heard the word in the recording, they've got in the grid, they have uh, put into the grid previously, they just cross it out, right? And uh, why, only when they can hear the word in the recording. And the pupil who manages to cross out, or the first pupil that has crossed out all the words, uh, shouts bingo. So, um, and is the winner. So we have again competition, some additional motivation. Uh, we, ha we have gamified the prediction process, the prediction strategies. Um, but the process are again the same because we have the topic, um, we can predict which word we will hear. So all those um, elements that are necessary strategy for when getting ready for listening tasks and especially listening uh, tasks to PTE young learners. A little bit about resources, just, uh, just last um, uh, few things and we will be finishing. Uh, I've mentioned the guides, right? So um, that's the, the crucial resource uh, directly for PTE young learners preparation. So every level, you, you can download that. These will be made available um, for you in this uh, goodie bags. Um, at the end of the webinar series. Mm, there, what you can get is a, a very detailed description of every task, right? So what it is, what it has, things that we have mentioned today, you can find it there. You can find the language content that I mentioned. So what kind of language, what kind of structures, what kind of vocabulary uh, topics at particular level and the vocabulary lists that I mentioned, especially uh, important uh, for lower levels to make them exposed to the pronunciation of the uh, vocabulary for, characteristic for the level. So all these things you will find in the uh, guides. Past papers, Bridget mentioned that um, yesterday, every, uh, there are a lot of past papers available from the website at every level. There are also editable past papers, so you can, uh, they can be edited by your pupils and sent back to you as a PDF file, um, which might be uh, very practical during this COVID-19 situation, if you teach uh, any groups online. And course books. Course books um, are infinite source of uh, teaching material for PTU young learners. I like to, to, to have a look at a new um, uh, series of course books teamed together um, that provides a lot of material exactly designed exactly the same way as exam tasks. So you have uh, multiple choice, picture based, um, a lot of uh, activities like that, matching names to pictures and listening, answering questions uh, based on um, based on some listening activity. So you will find all those, a lot of material for specifically designed the same way as um, PT Young Learners um, activities, so specifically getting them ready for PT Young Learners. But not only that, there you will also find, um, you will also find, all right, um, uh, you'll also find a section of each unit, lesson four, that is devoted to skill, practicing skills for lower levels to one and two. Uh, th th those will be mostly listening, so there is a lot of material for practicing skills. As you can see, um, it's uh, presented in a nice, motivating way. <coughs> Sorry. This book has also been carefully designed to reflect the topics, to reflect the uh, language content for particular levels. So if you look at scope and sequence, on the left we have um, uh, team together, on the right um, uh, language content for first words, and as you can see, unit one, look at my toys, the topics for first words is toys, then unit three, move your body, the topic for first words is the body and people's appearance. Unit four, meet my family. The topic for first words is families. Same story for uh, vocabulary, for example, areas. So uh, start a unit, colors. We have simple colors for first words. Uh, unit four, family. We have nouns for family members, first words. 
then we have uh, starting unit again, numbers, we have numbers um, as the vocabulary area. So that's, uh, this course book has been very carefully designed to reflect the language content um, for particular levels of PT young learners. Has been carefully designed to correlate every level to correl correlate with uh, particular levels of uh, PT young learners, as you can see in this uh, picture um, I'm displaying right now. So every, uh, every PT young learners level has a color correlating, as if to say, uh, teams together level, right? Um, okay, right. So this is, uh, this is it as far as, uh, let's say, my webinar is concerned. If you have any questions, obviously there is this Q&A. Mm, mm, uh, uh, right, let's, uh, one more thing maybe before I, um, before I finish. The team uh, together is also um, uh, equipped with additional uh, book that is called Top Tips and Practice that contains material specifically for getting ready to PT young learners. So you have, um, there you can find uh, strategies, um, things that we have discussed today. You have exercises uh, preparing students for um, specific item types in PT Young Learners. There are also some additional past papers in those top tips and practice and it's um, also aligned with Team Together course. So there is also a lot of additional material there. Right, uh, so now this is it. Um, if you have any question, obviously you can use uh, you can use this Q&A um, icon in your meeting controls. But if you want to, well, ask a question sometime later, feel absolutely free to contact me. You've got my email address uh, displayed. I am always very, very happy to, to help you with any issues connected with PT exams. So feel free to use my uh, email address and contact if there is anything else. I'm just quickly going to the Q&A uh, where I can see no questions and there is chat also. Um, right, there is a question in chat, where can we find uh, guides? Uh, you can go, well, obviously, as I said, the guides will be added to this goodie bag that will be available for download at the end of uh, our series of webinars uh, at around the 9th of uh, October. So uh, you will get this goodie bag. Uh, but there is also another, um, another place, as I said, this is PTE Young Learners website. Um, that uh, you can also, I am just quickly looking at, I will share this uh, with you now. I've just put a link in the chat where they right. can Great. Fantastic. from the, right. so, the website. So there is, there is this website uh, um, for PT Young Learners where you can find resources and uh, the, I'm displaying that right now. I... Yes, I'm displaying this. Uh, and you have guides for, as you can see, you can uh, find guides for every level um, PT young learners, right? There is obviously uh, this uh, center handbook that Bridget mentioned yesterday, um, oral test guide that Bridget is going to discuss later on uh, when discussing speaking. So there's a lot of material um, available from this website. You can find also past papers, um, uh, teacher and parent resources. So that's a place to visit if you're interested in PT Young Learners. Okay, right, there is one question. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, well, the question is, uh, what if a child circles the answer instead of putting a cross in the box in the first task? Does it count as if, um, uh, as if the answer is correct? That, that's why I mentioned the instructions, the, the importance of instructions. That's a test situation. Mm, uh, so there are some requirements to the test. So that's why the instructions are very clear, put a cross in, um, in the box. So if there is no cross in the box, uh, the, um, the answer cannot be counted as correct. Uh, that's why I said this is one of the strategies, uh, turn their, focus them on the instructions so that they do not make mistakes, which are very common actually, right, with young learners, especially at the age of eight, nine, maybe later they get used to different tests. 
Um, uh, there is um, uh, the question is do you have digital resources for team courses um, Bridget uh, do you know if these are already available uh, as far as I know there are digital yes. resources there as well uh, maybe yes. you can, can, uh, mm -hmm. can you hear me yes I yeah. can right I suppose yeah. so on um, on Pearson English portal um, for teachers who are adopting Team Together, they will be given access to um, the um, digital resources for teachers. So that includes uh, a front of class tool, um, which means if you're using a whiteboard or if you are um, if you're teaching online, then you've got the, the course book in an interactive version. And there are a series of teachers resources in that as well. So um, I mentioned in the webinar yesterday that there is actually um, a file within the Pearson English portal resources with past papers for PT young learners as well. So th there's a lot of support for the team together um, courses. Absolutely. Um, just to also say I've shared the link um, where you can download those guides in the chat if, if anybody wants to have a look at them immediately. Um, we will also obviously share those in the, um, in, the, in the digital goodie bag that we will share with everybody at the end of the round of webinars. Thank you. So it seems there are no more questions. Uh, okay, right. So, um, Thank you very much for being with, well, with Bridget and me today. And that was a real pleasure. Thank you. Okay. And we'll look forward to welcoming you tomorrow when uh, Camille will be uh, doing a webinar dedicated to preparing students for reading. So thank you very much, everybody. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.